Bless us now as we preach the word of God. God bless us to preach with power and authority. To be correct and contextually accurate. Oh God, may we do no damage to the word. Save the soul that's near as hell. Heal the sick that are in the midst. We rebuke every virus. We rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord for being our keeper. We thank you, Lord, for being our God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Protected by God's truth. We're in God's hands. Part two. I said it Thursday night, and I'll say it this again, and I'll reference my initial opening, some of the things I said Thursday night uh, in order to lay a foundation. But it is times like these. That really, truly makes me glad that I'm a Christian. I mean, whoo, uh, to, to know Jesus um, in a day like today is, is paramount. I don't see how anybody makes it without him. Um, I'm glad that I'm a born-again believer. I'm glad that I am a studier of the scriptures. Yeah. I'm glad that I read the Bible and that I read for myself and that I read for understanding and I am glad that I am a member of a Bible-believing church, a church that takes the scriptures or the Bible literally. I do not believe that the Bible is an allegorical book, although there may be some allegories in it. I do not believe that the Bible is a book of fairy tales. I don't agree with Chuck Todd, NBC news analyst, who said uh, he mentioned among other fairy tales. He was saying something to put down uh, Trump supporters and said they believe fairy tales like Noah's Ark. Well, Jesus talked about Noah. And Jesus didn't speak of it as a fairy tale. Am I right? No, I think he, I think he said Jonah. It wasn't, it wasn't Noah. Jonah, he says, like Jonah and the whale. Yeah, that's what he, called. he called that a fairy tale. Well, Jesus spoke of Jonah. Well, do you literally believe that a, a whale a swallowed Jonah? Is that what the Bible says? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, that's, that's, that's an easy... It's easy to believe. I find it hard to find. I, I, I find it hard uh, to believe that there are people who do not believe the scriptures. I think that you have to have a whole lot of faith. You have, to whole lot, have to have a whole lot of faith to not believe that God exists. Because there, everything around you tells you that God is. Amen. You look right, you look left, you look up, you look down, everything attests to the fact that there is a God. I thank God for the Bible. Amen. It's from the Bible we, amen, we learn in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, 24 and verse 7, uh, Jesus said this about pestilence, uh, viruses, plagues. He says, for nations shall rise up against nations, and kingdom against kingdoms. And he said this, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. We are told in the Bible that famines and plagues and things of this nature will happen. So when you hear of these things, don't be too alarmed. Don't get bent out of shape. And wonder, oh my God, what's going on? Well, the Lord told us that these things uh, will, will be. The Bible speaks of these things. The Bible speaks of pestilence at least 47 times in the Old Testament. These are plagues, pestilences. They are plagues that are arranged 
to destroy. Some are sent by God. Some are naturally occurring in this fallen, sin-cursed world that we live in. And some have been made by men, by men in laboratories. And they lost control. These things happen. Not every famine is of natural causes. Sometimes wicked men, wicked dictators, wicked leaders take the food and hoard it. Sometimes people create droughts by damming up water, and, uh, uh, blocking waterways and doing different things. The Bible tells us, however, that these things will happen more and more as we near the coming of the Lord. In its plural form, pestilence is mentioned twice in the New Testament. Plagues that cause diseases. And these diseases are designed to destroy. Now the latest one, and it's not the first one, and, one, and let me tell you something, and it won't be the last. This is why it concerned me, sir, that so many preachers close their churches. Listen, this is not the first virus. This won't be the last virus. What are we going to do every, every six months or so? Start closing our churches down and stuff like that because there is a menace in society? There's this latest virus, the coronavirus, um, and these are latest numbers. Now, that, the numbers will be revised. Well, I guess they gave a new report at 11 o'clock during the church hour. What does that tell you? Uh, but as of uh, March 14, 2020, according to the CDC and the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, in the U.S., there's 1,694-plus cases of corona in a country of 350-plus, 360, 360 million. There's 100 and... 1,694 cases. Deaths in the U.S. have been, as of, uh, I don't know if they revised it up this morning uh, at 11 o'clock, but it was 41. Now, that's 41 too many, but that's not 41,000. It's not 4,100. That's 41. A multitude of those deaths came from people who died in a rest home, which was sad, about 19 or so, if my numbers are correct. And, uh, and uh, the culprit uh, of many have been the, the cruise ships and different things. But the point is, I wanna, I'm headed somewhere with this. Um, in our state, and you heard the announcement from the governor, and, and we, we see what's going on throughout the state and the country, and. Uh, these things have great uh, economical um, uh, an economical effect on the economy and everything else. But in our state, there's a whopping a state of uh, a, a state of 10.3 to 10.8 million persons in the state of North Carolina. There's a whopping 23 cases of Corona. 23 cases in a state of 10 million plus people. 23 cases. The number of deaths in our state is absolutely zero, unless somebody died this morning in a state of 10 million people. And yet, we are bombarded. We are bombarded. One of the things I said Thursday night, and I'll say it today, that as a believer, and I, and I praise you, and the sheer numbers of you who are here today because that means you really had to have faith in God because I know what you've been hearing uh, on your television. I know what you've heard on the, on the radio and from everywhere. They, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. Matter of fact, don't breathe. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dismissing it as nothing, but I'm showing you how the, uh, the, the hysteria doesn't match the numbers. Folk don't get a life sentence for stealing a Snickers bar.
You follow me? And it's something about this one. Uh, I'm going to preach the Bible. But it's something about this one. Now, this one's not the first one. In 2009, the H1N1 pandemic. From April the 12th, 2009 to April the 10th, 2010, the CDC estimates that there were 60.8 million cases of the H1N1 virus. 2,074, 274,300 hospitalizations. It's not around the world in the U.S. It's not around the world. And 12,469 deaths in the U.S. due to this H1N1. What did they close? What did they shut down? Matter of fact, before it was mentioned by then President uh, Barack Obama, it had gone on for about six months. And over a thousand people had already died. And nothing was said. Are you following me? There was something going on. Amen. Uh, I, I talked to you um, last time about other viruses uh, that had taken place. SARS, I won't go back over the numbers, but the SARS virus that worldwide uh, affected a whole lot of people. Did I read the worldwide on uh, H1N1? Worldwide, the CDC estimated that uh, between 11 to 12% of the then global population, which was 6.8 billion, that is, all around 700 million to 1.4 billion people contracted the illness with about 150,000 to 575,000 fatalities of the H1N1. And uh, 41 have died from corona. My point is, if you're listening to me, you got to know that for whatever reason that it will be revealed, I have my thoughts. I'll share them with you when the Lord released me. But I see it. And I'll tell you right now, it rests in politics. That's where I rest at. See, you can never let a good catastrophe Go to waste. And leaders know that to get people to do what you want them to do, all you got to do is get people afraid. Create uncertainty. Create doubt. And people will run in any direction that you point them in, whether it is reasonable or not. Most people are followers and not leaders. Most people today have been trained to operate in group think. That's one of the things that make our church different. You know, a lot of people have trouble with me because I don't toll the line. Amen. I don't get my marching orders from so-called leaders in the community. I don't know why we need all these leaders anyway. We need to get black leaders in the community. Do, do, do the Asians have leaders? White folk have leaders? Hispanic have leaders? Why we got to have three or four people to tell the rest of us what to think about everything? 
when God have given all of us brain to think for ourselves. What distinguished, you know what they said? Don't go to the upper room because that pastor is political. I'm the only black preacher in town who tell the people, think for yourself. I'll lay it out there, but you think for yourself. The rest of them are political. They're the ones who tell you, we're Democrats and we vote a certain way. I'm the one who tell you, I'm neither. Ain't nobody's hand in my pocket. No party's hand in my pocket. I'm God's man. I'm God's man. And if the politicians' uh, policies line up with the Bible, you'll have my support. They go against the word of God, I can't support that. Doesn't matter to me. I don't consider things like color, gender, or any of that. Uh, what do you stand for? Whether I like the politician or not, what do you stand for? Whether I like their disposition or not, whether they are bolsterous or, lie or, or, or quiet, whether the person is refined or obnoxious, I want to know what do you stand for? What are your policy positions? If they line up with what I believe, you got my support. If they don't, then you don't have my support. Speaking of not letting a good uh, catastrophe go to waste. Now, they're trying to raise money to help people with the corona virus and uh, working to get a bill through the house for the coronavirus or to help lessen some of the economical effects that will affect people as measures are taken to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Some people lose their jobs. Some people, you know, we shut down the schools. Oh my, uh, parents really, ain't too many of them rejoicing about that. Um, <laughs> Amen. For some people, that was the way that they could feed their children during the day. For others, they, they, it's, it's the, the, the school keeps the children where they can go to work. So you, it's, 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 while trying to get some relief through, um, I mean, she did it. So I'm not playing politics, with, but, but she did it. And she got caught red-handed. Nancy Pelosi tried to put in the bill, guess what this now? Now, check this out. We're trying, they're trying to take care of corona, right? Coronavirus. She tries to slip in the bill a billion dollars for Planned Parenthood. And got busted. A billion dollars. Now, now, what does abortion and the support of abortion have to do with corona. I thought we were trying to save lives. I thought the whole point is for people to live. And yet, and yet, and yet, if there's a way. That's why you have to stay vigilant. That's why you have to stay vigilant. You know, because you know, the, 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 the powers that be they, they always try and stuff. People said to me, say to me often, why is there a political edge to your sermons? I, I, try, I, try, I try not to. But you know what it's like? I'll tell you what it's like. It's like, uh, it's like, uh, come here, Robert. It's, I'll tell you what it's like. All right, Robert's fussing with me. Robert want to fight. Look, man, I'm not going to fight you. I don't want to fight you, man. So I walk over here. I walk away. All right? You know what he does? Come on, Robert. Look, man, now leave me alone. I don't want to fight him. I walk away. Every time you turn around, the politicians are stepping into the church. 
stepping into the morals, stepping into what we believe. I don't want to fight, but you won't leave me alone. Now, see, my, my God, they, they keep following me. Now you, I, 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 look, I'm running out of red lines. And you know what they've done? They backed us against the wall and we're coming out with our guns blazing in the name of the Lord. They did this. They drew first blood. Don't, don't try to tell us as a separation of church and state which the way they use it is not the way uh, uh, Jefferson meant it when, he, when it was designed to protect the church from the state. But then they try, uh, after they try to silence us, then they try to tell us what to believe. Man, ma manipulating uh, what we can preach and what we can talk about. And so now there is this thing and 24 hour a day coverage. It's designed, believers, to put fear in you, to frighten you, and to shake you up, and to have you so afraid that you begin to think, listen to me now, like a socialist and a communist. See, in socialist and communist countries, the state is God. The state is God. Government is God. Government chooses the winners and the losers. Government provides everything. You watch it, millennials. Watch it. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Watch it. Somebody pays. Watch it. We, we want you to have free college, free health care, free this, free that, free this. Free weave, free fake nails, free, free, free clothes, free everything, free. You, you shouldn't have to pay for nothing. Free. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Y'all don't like my preaching today. That's that's the devil. That's the devil. And have you where you feel entitled? And uh, why do I have to pay for this? And why do I have to pay for that? Folk have been paying ever since Adam and Eve. And you're going to have to pay too. <laughs> Class warfare. Race peddling. All of these things. These things are designed to put fear in you and cause you to look to the wrong place for comfort and secure and security but our text tells us to look to the Lord the Bible says we're, we're given an invitation to God's protection what's the invitation he that dwelleth I'm going to preach today in the secret place of uh, Elion. Elion, E-L-Y-O-N, is actually the Hebrew name for Most High, which means exalted one. So the writer here already sees God the right way. He's the exalted one. The God of the Bible has no equal. He's the exalted one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the exalted one shall abide in the shadow. See, he's revealing God's protective powers by using various names for God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of Elion shall abide under the shadow of El Shaddai. The Almighty God, El Shaddai, 
which is the great protector, the all-sufficient one. We used to believe that you could depend on God. See, the devil somehow wants to get through, break through your psyche and convince you that the God of the Bible is not dependable. That you can't trust him. And I'm here to tell you, yes, you can. Yes, you can. He, he, he's still God. He still answers prayer. Praise the Lord. He, 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 he sees us through. And, and see, one of the things, saints, you, you won't like this, but one of the things about the invitation, I'm going to go out in the weeds just for a minute, of, of God's uh, protection uh, is God's standards, listen to this, of uh, cleanliness. See, we live in a dirty society. It's amazing that you got to keep telling people to wash their hands. PSAs on wash your hands. Telling grown people how long they need to wash their hands. What does that tell you? As a society, we need help. We, 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 we become uh, dirty. The Bible mentions the word clean at least 117 times. Cleanse is mentioned 32 times in the scriptures. And washed is mentioned 83 times in the scriptures. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22 says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And look at this. And our bodies washed with pure water. That's a reference to baptism, but also it's a reference to the cleanly standards of God. The Bible teaches in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of of God. Notice the emphasis on cleansing ourselves. You see a pattern here. God is clean. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 25 says, Then shall I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will cleanse you. Cleanliness is God's optimum. Someone said the other day that cleanliness is next to godliness. I told them I don't agree with that. Cleanliness is godliness. It ain't next to it. It is godly. Godliness. You can't be godly and filthy. Say amen. amen. Everything about a saint ought to be clean. Clean clothes. Clean house. Clean nails. Clean bodies. You ain't going to say amen now. Clean car. Clean. Keep our church clean. Keep the yards clean. Paper picked up. Cleanliness. It's God's way. One of the things that happen when you get sanctified is you come out of the filth. And you walk in cleanliness and you take pride in being clean. Doesn't cost much to be clean. Your clothes don't have to be the prettiest clothes in town, but they ought to be the cleanest. Praise the Lord. You don't like my talk today. Ephesians 5 and verse 26 says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And lastly on this, uh, uh, Exodus chapter 19 verse the 10 through 11 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go up, the people, uh, go up, go, go, excuse me, unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people Upon Mount Sinai. God said even before I show up. Make sure your clothes are clean. He didn't say they had to be new. But he did say they had to be clean. <laughs> say amen. 
we live in a society where we're not as clean, we're not as hygienic as we ought to be. He that dwelleth, let me preach, in the secret place of the Most High, where there dwelleth literally is live. And the secret place, my friends, the hiding place here of our text uh, is a place of protection. And this place of protection, uh, contextually, is the sanctuary or the tabernacle. See, all these churches, you're closed. And I know that some of you have, you can have social, you can have an online service. But you should never close your church unless you have to. If martial law is declared, that's a different thing. But you don't volunteer to close your church. The Bible says, let us not forsake the assemblings of ourselves together. There is something spiritual about our gathering together. I salute uh, and happy birthday to Sister McCoy today. Today's her birthday. Her and her husband, uh, they spent her birthday uh, in church on Sunday morning. And you know, it's the right thing to do. All of you should. I don't know why you would, uh, if your birthday falls on Sunday, I don't know why you miss church because of your birthday. God, it, it only happens once every seven years. So when it roll around to the Lord, you ought to be glad to, to celebrate since he gave you the birthday. He let you, he let you show up. How you doing? He let you show up to, to be alive. Then you, 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 you praise him by being in his house. Oh, my, the sanctuary. I'm not getting many amens. The Bible said this in Psalms 27 and verse 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. He shall, in the secrets of his tabernacle. It's talking about the tabernacle, the tent, which was before, um, before the temple was built. And uh, the pavilion is God's dwelling place. It's a dwelling place. This is the tent and pavilion references the same place. He says, he will hide me in his tabernacle, and he shall set me upon a rock. Oh, the, the best place you can be right now is in the house of God. In the house of God. Bible says in Psalms 31 and verse 20, thou shall hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. God knows how to hide us. I want to encourage you to be church goers, church attenders, you who are streaming. Streaming is wonderful as long as you're streaming because you can't get here. Yes, you are, uh, you're, in a sick, you're on a sick bed. You, you are convalescing. You're in the hospital. You're many, many miles away. But if you stream and you're able to come, then you're missing out on a blessing and you are abusing a privilege. You, you're using a thing for something in a, in a way that is not meant to be used. Nothing takes the place of the saints gathering together. I want you to know, uh, I thank God that even our president declared this day a national day of prayer. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, now, I didn't hear him. He may have said it, but I didn't hear him say it. I didn't hear the governor ask for prayer. Amen. In his press call. He may have, but I didn't hear it. He, I, he may have. He may have said, God bless America. God bless our state. He may have said it, but I didn't hear it. We need the Lord's hand. Praise the Lord. The Bible teaches that plans and preparations come from man. But the answer to those plans, the execution of those plans come from God. If the Lord don't help you, it won't happen. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 1 says, The preparations are of the heart in man. And the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. That is, the planning, the preparation is on man's part. We can make, we can uh, uh, put forth our best laid plans. But if God don't bless those plans, the plans still won't work. 
So even with all the things that they're putting in place, if we don't pray, if we don't seek the Lord, then they will, they will not work. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God says, then will I hear from heaven, forgive the sin and heal the land. The saints, the saints have to pray. When the plague broke out, I, I feel uh, something. In the book of Numbers, I'm a Bible preacher. The plague broke out. Numbers, chapter number 25. And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredoms with the daughters of Moab. While they were in Shittim, almost in the land of promise. Yes, six miles. Uh, it was east of the Jordan River, six miles north of the Dead Sea. Almost there. Look what they do. Uh, men, the men of Israel began to commit whoredoms with the women of Moab, the daughters of Moab. We learned that this was uh, the, the plan of Balaam. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And look at this. And the people, see the women of Moab, uh, they hadn't been traveling in the wilderness for 40 years. They weren't dusty. And dirty and you know, clothes, filthy. The women of Moab, they had tight dudes, up dudes, had bouffant, and, uh, and with curls. Praise the Lord. Nails all done. Lipstick on. They were ready. They were ready. And the uh, men of Israel had been traveling, wandering in the wilderness, and all of a sudden, Here are these women. This is what happened. This is what happened. And they, the women began to invite them to worship their own gods. The women began to invite them to, to uh, sacrifice to their gods and to serve other religions. And they lured them through sex. And Israel joined himself to Baal Peor. That means they began to worship Baal of Peor. And when they backslid, listen America, as we let men marry men, listen America, as we become an increasingly immoral country, we're aborting our children and uh, passing all these wicked laws. Listen here. The Bible teaches, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, he says, look at this, take all the heads of the people. We can't go back to Moses' day, but he said, take the heads and hang them up before the Lord against the sun. Cut the heads off. That the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye everyone, his men, that were joined to Baal of Peor. And the children, and behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Middenish woman. In the sight of Moses, look at this, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door in the tabernacle of the congregation. Why were they weeping? They had gathered because a plague broke out. 20 and 3,000, verse 9 says 24,000 died from the plague. When the plague, this was, 
This was more powerful than Corona when the plague broke out, which is my point. The children of Israel went to the tabernacle and began to pray. Now they're telling us to shut the tabernacles down. But in the time of trouble, that, that needs to be all over our nation. People praying, saying, God, turn this thing. And uh, we might want to start, not with corona, we might want to start with influenza, who have thus far this year killed not 41, but 20,000. And it takes approximately between 20 and 60,000 lives in this country every year, and they ain't never shut anything down. There's something else going on. Say what you will or may. And uh, so you, you can't let them scare you like this. So let me, let me, Rocky, we need, to, we need to get ready to go home because they, I don't know if the saints like this or not, but uh, the hiding place was the house of God. Saints, the hiding place is not your house. Thank God for your prayer closet. Thank God for my prayer closet. But it's not the same as God's sanctuary. And you preachers, out there who are listening, sanctify your sanctuary. Some things are not supposed to be multi-purpose, used for everything. No, no. What makes the sanctuary special is that it is set aside for the work of the Lord. And, and but one thing ought to take place in the sanctuary, and it ought not to be voting. Shouldn't be child care. Shouldn't be this social service or that social service. This is the house of God. This, in this place, notice there's no pictures of man. There's no, there's no uh, a portrait of the pastor or the founder of any man. The sanctuary is God's domain. And what happens in here is the gospel is preached. Songs of Zion are sang. Devils are cast out. Cancers are dried up. Souls are saved. We're in the sanctuary. This is the hiding place. Man, I had trouble sleeping last night. I had trouble sleeping. Oh, I got up several times before the alarm went off. And I just, I just, I, I look, I just got, I said, I got up, I said, I got to turn this thing off. Because I got to get to church. I got to get there. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Driving past some of these churches. I can't wait to get to the hiding place. And when I pulled up on the ground, I said to myself, it's all right now. It's all right now, saints. I want you to know that uh, you do yourself a service to be in God's hiding place. We're under the shadow of the Almighty. That is, we're under God's protection. Thank God for a country that has the best medical care in the world, providing they don't ruin it. Thank God, thank God for the medicines, the hospitals, and the breakthroughs. I praise God for it. Uh, but I'll tell you what, every hospital, no matter how good it is, no matter how new it is, no matter how many top-notch surgeons they have, they all come with morgues because people die. It takes God to keep you. It takes God to keep you. Am I right about that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're, we're blessed. We have the best. But, but let me tell you, you got to trust the Lord. Every time I fly, I tell God when I get on the plane, thank you, Lord, for the intelligence of the pilot. Thank you for the school that he went to. Thank you for aviation technology. Got on this great big tin can filled with an explosive fuel that's going to hurtle me through the air at 750 miles per hour, 32,000 feet in the air, and they tell you that you're safe. I get on, I thank God for all that, but then I tell the Lord, some trust in horses other than chariots, but I'm going to depend on the name of the Lord our God, for if the Lord don't take care of you, 
If God don't keep you, you won't be kept. It takes the Lord to take care of us. And every one of us ought to be glad today to be in the house of the Lord. Somebody tell Brother Rick to bring me up right here. We're getting ready to go home. Somebody lift your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. He said, I love this. Now, I want to know what are you saying? Well, I want to know what are you saying? What are you saying? Don't you touch your neighbor, but ask your neighbor, what, it, what do you say about God? Don't you high five them. Don't you, don't hug them. But I want you to ask them, what do you say about God? Because the psalmist said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Now, I want to know what are you saying about him? I want to know what kind of confession are you making? I'm here today to declare that the God of the Bible, he is my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my keeper. He's the one who takes care of me. He said, I say of the Lord. That is, I say of Jehovah. That is, he's the covenant keeping God. He makes a covenant and he keeps his word. He is, he is my refuge. He's the place where I go to surrender. He's my fortress. He keeps the devil away. He's my Elohim. That is, he's the most powerful. Hallelujah. He's surpassing in greatness and glory. There is nobody like him. I wonder today, do you see God that way? Is he wonderful in your eyes? Is he the almighty? Does he still light your fire? Do you still get excited every time you think of the goodness of Jesus? Hallelujah. What about now? Every channel you turn to, Corona, 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 Corona. I wonder, is anybody saying Jesus, 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 keep me, Lord. Watch over my soul. Ah, yeah. Yeah, Lord. Somebody praise him here. Praise him. Uh huh. I want to know how much faith do you have? Verse 3 says, Surely! Ain't no doubt there. No if, and, buts, or maybes. Surely! Do I have any surely folk in here? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know whether I'm going to catch it or not. I hope not. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, you can't be too careful. Surely! Uh, it, it's surely in your Bible. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. God says, I'll deliver you uh, from the traps that the devil set and from the noisome pestilence. Now notice the way this is written. Somebody is speaking to someone else. Now the, 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 the talk is this. The, the, the theological talk is that none other than Moses himself wrote this particular psalm. And then there are others who say that it was a temple minister who was talking to a worshiper who came into the temple who was troubled and he needed some uh, advice. Now notice if, uh, if it was this temple minister, can you see the minister ministering to someone who have come in looking for solace and comfort and deliverance and that person sits beside them and say, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Says, I know that there's a noisome pestilence out there. I know that there are traps out there, but honey child, let me testify. I know what the Lord did, has done for me. And I'm here to tell you, I've been saved long enough to be able to tell you that surely 
the same God who brought me out the same God who healed my body. The same God who kept us through N1, H1. Kept us through the, the, the swine flu, through SARS, through Ebola, and you name it. God who kept us before. He's the same God today. And he's able. right brother I feel like doing the same thing don't you don't you shake your neighbor's hand don't you touch your neighbor don't you hug your neighbor but you ought to look at him and say surely now you gotta use you gotta use your preaching voice now surely From every trap, from everything Satan tries to do, I'm a living witness that he is a deliverer and he shall cover thee with his fetters. What's he talking about here? He's, uh, he's bringing up the image of the ark of the covenant of the Lord where the, uh, the cherubims, the winged creatures were on the top of the ark and they covered the ark. He said the same God who covered the ark with his wings, he will protect you. And he says here, he says, his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. I like this word truth. I'm going to stop right here because I preached long enough and I'll finish the other later. But can I park at God's truth right here? When he said his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. The word truth here means faithfulness means trustworthy means dependable the fact that God is a dependable God a trustworthy God a God who won't run out on you in the time of trouble a God who won't quit when corona break out a God who won't quit when they shut down the airlines when they shut down the NBA they didn't shut God down when they shut down Major League Baseball, they didn't shut God down. And if your company gets shut down, God is not going to be shut down. If your body gets sick, the Lord's not going to be shut down because he's on the job. And you can count on him through the storm and rain. Hallelujah. Sister Dooley, just keep on counting on him. Hallelujah. Because God is, he is a healer. He is a way maker. And I want to close with my friend Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, this I recall to my mind. And therefore, I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion faileth not. Hey, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, great, great is thy faithfulness. Somebody praise him. Somebody give him glory. faithful do you know he's walking with you hallelujah he walks with me and he talks with me 
and he tells me that I'm his own and the love we share as we tarry there none of us has ever known he he walked with me and he talked with me and he tell I am his own and the joy we share as we tell Every that no other has ever known. I come to the garden alone while the dew still on roses and the voice I hear. Son of God is cold, and he walks, he talks, and he tells me I'm his own, and the love we share as we talk, we there. Another has ever meet me around the altar. Preacher, you reminded me today that I can trust God. You reminded me that He's dependable. You reminded me that I can count on even in times like these. Where the media, the world, and everybody is trying to frighten us, to scare us, to make us believe that there's no hope. Uh-uh. I'm not believing that. I'm not going that way. God, keep my mind strong. Keep my will strong. And let me tell you something, saints. Sometimes you just got to cut that stuff off. Got to cut that stuff off. And you need to notice about the media. They ain't giving you no wall-to-wall -wall coverage on the coronavirus because they're concerned about you. It's just a story. Whatever happens next, let something happen next. They'll change so fast, and you won't hear from them on this subject no more. It's just a story. But for us, it's not just a story. This is the way we live. We believe. We believe God. We serve the Lord. We trust the Lord. None other has ever Ah, uh, yes. Lift your hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we gather around the altar. We thank you, Lord, for living in a country and in a state where we're able to worship you freely. Where our elected officials have not saw fit to shut down the secret place. And God, I thank you that we're in a church where we don't have a preacher who will shut it down on his own. Lord, we've never seen anything like this. We've never seen this level of hysteria. We've, we, we've seen viruses, Lord. We've seen a whole lot of them. We've seen Ebola. We've seen SARS. We've seen H1N1. We've seen 
Oh, we see influenza all the time. There's all kinds. We, we see them, Lord. But we've never seen the media and Hollywood and the talking heads act like this. We've never seen people wreck their own economy. We've never seen schools being shut down and drastic measures taken like this and maybe we will see why later on when in our whole country only 41 maybe 50 persons have died and we pray for the families of those who have passed but oh God we've not seen we've not seen this before. We've not seen this. We've not seen this. So Lord, we ask you to heal. We ask you to direct our minds. To give us, look at this, the spirit of discernment. Preacher, we thought you were going to pray. What's wrong with her? Take her somewhere, get some water, then. Take her now. We ask you, oh God, to keep our minds in the name of Jesus. Keep our minds. Touch her body in the name of Jesus. For your glory and for your honor. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus. Raise her up right now. Raise her up right now. You're good, Lord. And Lord, you're kind. And Lord, you're holy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for your goodness, for your kindness, and for your tender mercy. I ask you, Lord, to gird up the loins of our minds. Gird them up, Lord. Gird them up. That we are strong-minded people. Strong-willed people. Smart. Smart. Wise enough to make whatever adjustments is needed. But strong-minded. Not easily manip manipulated by systems and ideologies and things that we can no longer trust. By kingmakers and elites who have global agendas who could care nothing for people like us, we regular folk, who are caught in the middle of huge global antichrist agendas. God keep us. Make us wise. In the name of Jesus, wise, wise. I hear the Lord speaking to me. To some of you, you've stumbled and fumbled too long. you in and out, up and down too long. This is not a time to be a weak Christian, to be wishy-washy, you know, stumbling over same old flesh stuff. Same old stuff. Same old stuff. Flesh stuff. Same old, same old. 
we got we got globalist powers. We got all kinds of agendas going on. And there you go stumbling over a little flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't get past fornication. Can't get past adultery. You can't get past going home, taking care of your family. Need prayer for that. Need five meetings. Need meetings and sessions to discuss things that you should have long ago overcome. You have to find out which way God is moving and move with God or you'll be left behind. God keep us. God keep us. God keep us. God keep us. us. Our young men, our young women, God keep. God keep us. Lord, send your hand of protection on us all and cause your face to ever shine upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I release you from the altar today, I want to know if there's anybody who wants to be saved. You don't know Jesus. You haven't been born again. If you haven't and you want to know the Lord, slip up your hand and we'll pray for you. And Jesus Christ will come into your heart and he will save your soul. God bless you, young man. The Lord will save you today. Hallelujah. God bless you, my brother. I tell you what, I saw him when he walked in and it did my heart good see him come in and the young men sat there and paid attention to every word that was preached God save him God save him come on somebody thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for these young men. Thank you for these young men. Hallelujah. (laughs) Oh, look at God. Look at God. Look at the power of Jesus. Look at the power of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. My brother, did you give your heart to the Lord today? Did you get saved today? Praise the Lord. Well, how about you, brother? Praise the Lord. Man, God, somebody praise God for them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, guys, please come back. Please come back. Glory to God. Glory to God. Isn't that worth it? That's worth opening church right there. Woo! God is good.
your seats praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your saving power. Thank you for your healing power. Now, Father, now, Father, now, Father, I want you to join me in this last prayer. We're going to get the offering and we're going on. Now, Father, we pray for our nation. We pray for our nation. We pray, Lord, we pray that America sees. We pray, Lord, against the spread of corona. We pray against the spread of all of these viruses. We pray that your will be done. We pray against having media-directed hysteria and hype. We don't let them tell us what to supplicate about. We seek your face. And God, we know that you know. So, Lord, revive our nation. Turn these viruses. Keep us, O oh God. And, Father, we grab hold to the promise. We grab hold to it. We grab hold to it. Your word said, A thousand shall fall at thy right at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee you said only with thine eyes shall thou see the destruction or the reward of the wicked we claim it we claim it hallelujah we believe it. We hold to it. And we trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord.